Hello and welcome. Hello and welcome to this final, final. first look exploring session, looking at uh, the uh, the proverbs of John Haywood, uh, which is a uh, a, a book, uh, a, a very popular book, uh, which went into many additional uh, iterations uh, after this particular initial one uh which we're not going to read because they literally are pretty much just lists of proverbs whereas this is attempting something literary and clever we've done two sessions on this and last session sort of we we started seeing the wood for the trees uh or maybe that was just one of the proverbs that was said um <laughs> i'm fairly certain we got that one last time um in terms of there is a narrative and the narrative is doing interesting things slightly misogynistic things but the characters are quite well drawn so uh, it does give us some room for manoeuvre as to what to do with that. Uh, we are going this time from part two, chapter six, uh, which is uh, very exciting uh, to uh, see uh, where this all goes. We are in the midst of a a family dispute. A, an older woman has uh, married a younger man. He's... Uh, got bored very very quickly as the money has run out and uh, he's having it off uh, all over the shop uh she's not very happy about this they've tried to rope in the the next door neighbor uh to uh to act as sort of a go-between and sounding board and and pu punch ball um uh for for their their, their quarrel and uh, uh we've just heard from the wife and we're about to hear from the younger husband. Uh, this is all an example being told in the narrative to a young man who's trying to decide whether to marry an older wife or a younger, um, depending on their circumstance in terms of money. And uh, yes, we are going to rattle relatively swiftly through uh, with the readers today. We have Eric and we have Tom and I'm Robert. And uh, we are going to go from chapter six. And we're going to sort of pass the baton between us as we go along um, one after the other. Uh, so I will uh, go to uh, uh, Eric first to open chapter six. Uh, and as I say previously, uh, the, uh, the uh, narrator in this was uh, had been speaking to the wife, but now the husband bursts in, in at doors, he came forth with her, she was gone, and without any temperate protestation, thus he began in way of exclamation. Uh, chapter six. Oh, what choice may compare to this to the devil's life, like his that hath chosen a devil to his wife? Namely, such an old witch, such a macabroin as ever more like a hog haggeth the groin on her ha bleh, as a hog hangeth the groin on her husband, except he be her slave, and follow all fancies that she would have. Tis said there is no good accord where every man would be a lord, wherefore my wife will be no lord but lady to make me that should be her lord a baby. Before I was wedded, and since, I made reckoning to make my wife bow at every beckoning. Bachelors boast how they will teach their wives good, uh, but many a man speaketh of Robin Hood that never shot in his bow. When all is sought, bachelors' wives and maids' children be well taught. And with this, I also begin to gather every man can rule the shrew, save he that hath her. At my will, I went, she should have wrought like wax, but I find and feel she hath found such knacks in her bouget, or bouquet maybe, and such toys in her head, uh, that to dance after her pipe I'm nigh led. It is said of old, an old dog biteth sore, but by God, the old bitch biteth sorer and more, and if not with teeth, she hath none but with her tongue. If all tales be true, quoth I, Though she be stung, and thereby sting you, she's not much to blame, for whatever you say, thus goeth the fame. When folk first saw your substance laid in your lap, without your pain, when with your wife brought by good hap, oft in remembrance of haps, of happy, de happy device, they would say, better be happy than wise, not minding thereby to than to deprave your wit, for they had good hope to see pro good proof of it. But... Since their good opinion therein so cools, that they say as oft, God sendeth fortune to fools, in that as fortune without your wit gave it, so that can your wit not keep it when ye have it. Saith one, this gear was gotten on a holy day. Saith another, who may hold that will away? This game from beginning showeth what end is meant, soon gotten, soon spent, ill gotten, ill spent. 
you are not you are called not only too good great a spender to frank a giver and as free a lender but also ye spend give and lend among such whose likeness minish, minisheth your honesty much as your money and much they disallow that ye break all from her that brought all to yow and spend it out at doors in spite of her because ye would kill her to be quit of her for all her kindness of her part that may rise, yet ye shew all the unkindness ye can devise, and where reason and custom, they say, affords, always to let the losers have their words. Ye may make her a cock, ye make her a cock queen and consume her good, and she she must sit like a bean in a monk's hood, bearing no more rule than a goose turned in Thames. But at her own maid's becks, wings, or hems, she must obey those lambs, or else a lambskin you will provide for her to lap her in. This biteth the mare by the thumb, as they say, for were ye touching condition, say they, the castle of honesty and all things else. Yet should this one thing, as their old whole tale tells, defile and deface that castle to a cottage, one drop, yeah, one crop of a turd marreth a pot of pottage. And some to this cry, let him pass, for we think the more we stir a turd, the worse it will stink. With many conditions good, one that is ill defaceth the flower of all, and doth all spoil. Now, quoth I, if you think they truly clatter, let your amendment amend the matter, half warned, half armed. This warning for this I show, he that hath an ill name is half hanged, you know. Right. Uh, we've got an interesting selection of uh, very scatological points. I mean, it's a good point. Uh, one one crop of a turd marreth a pot of pottage. I I think this is a very uh, true thing. Uh, I don't think we can deny the the veracity of such a thing. Uh, it will, generally speaking, uh, ruin that. And uh, the more we stir a turd, the worse it will stink. I mean, this is all good advice. Um, yeah, we've got the, uh, the 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 this obviously it's, with this chap is on a um something of an invective spree saying some pretty unpleasant things um uh, and yeah but he's not a very nice chap so uh, that's sort of uh, uh, encompassing that any thoughts uh, as we get back into the zone of uh, of this particular text um don't be afraid if you don't have any it's it's all right uh, i'll have them thaw you i will think for you about bagpuss um uh yeah it's um it's very much where we left off, but uh, we, we've we've had the uh, the wife's, uh, and now we have the husband's turn. And uh, I'm not quite sure what the narrator who's been drafted in on this is really making his point at this point. Um, uh, beyond, you know, ease off a bit. Uh, but maybe we'll get a bit more data. Uh, Eric, I got the impression he was basically going, "You're an idiot." You might as well protect, like, you, you can't hide your own crap. Mm. <laughs> like, you're not even good at pretending that you're enjoying yourself. So, it, like, if you're waiting for her to die, you might as well just pretend that you like her enough to sort of not not make her suspicious. Mm, yes, because, you know, okay, um, uh, there, there are... Um limits to what uh, power she has legally but you know even, even you know once dead the, all sorts of problems could happen if you, you 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 just make it you know make it so overtly obvious yes don't be an idiot um he's an idiot so that's not going to change right let's get into chapter seven and see where this narrative is going um because uh, remember we are trying to get to the question the answer to the question of who should you marry um so you know this is an example for for us all um he said. Anyway, uh, Tom, take it away with chapter seven. I will ring the bell and take over from you at some point. Well said, said he. Marry, sir, here is a tale. For honesty, meet to set the devil on sale. But now am I forced a bread rolled unfold to unfold, to tell somewhat more of the tale as told. Grow this as most part does, and durst hold my life of the jealousy of Dame Julock, my wife. Then shall ye wonder when truth done define how she can and doth here both bite and whine. 
Frenzy, heresy and jealousy are three that men say hardly or never cured be. And although jealousy need not or boot not, what helpeth that counsel is reason root not. And in May jealousy she is gone so far, she thinketh I run all over, all over all that I took on. Take good heed that, quoth I, for at a word the proverb saith she had shrinken with the sword, shall be stricken with the scabbard. Striketh with the sword shall be stricken with the scabbard. Tush, quote he, the devil with the scabbard will not strike me. But my dame taking suspicion of full brief reported it for the truth to the most mischief. In words golden whole, as men by wit and wish, she will lie as fast as a dog will lick a dish. She is of truth as false as God is true. And if she, she chance to see me at a view, kiss any of my maids alone, but in sport, that taketh she in earnest after bedlam sort. The cow is wood, her tongue runneth on patterns. It will be morn, we will have a pair of martins. If it even, even song, not Latin nor Greek, but English like that as in Easter week. She beginneth first with a cry of lison, to which she ringeth appeal a laburn, such a one as folks ring bees with basins. The world runneth on wheels, but except her maid show a pair of her heels. She halteth, she halteth her by a boy rope till her brains ache and brings home a good dish, good cheer to make. What is this, saith she, good meat, say I, for yow? God have mercy, horse, a pig of mine own sow. Thus, when I see by kindness, ease reneweth not, and then that the eye seeth not, the heart reeth not. And that he must needs go whom the devil doth drive, her force forcing me for mine erst to contrive. To let her first and fret alone for me, I go where merry chat and good cheer may be. Much spend I abroad, which at home should be spent, if she would leave controlling and be content. There leaped a whiting, quoth she, and leapt in straight. There ta take a hair from his beard, and mark this conceit. He maketh you believe, by lies laid on by load, my brawling at home maketh him banquet abroad, where his banquets abroad make me brawl at home. For as in a frost the mud wall made of loam crackish and crummeth in pieces asunder, so melteth his money to the world's wonder. Thus may ye see, to turn the cat in the pan, or set the cart before the horse, well he can. He is but a little at home, and the truth is so, and forth with him he will not let me go. And if I come to be merry where he is, then is he mad, as ye shall hear by this, where he with gossips at a banquet late was, at which, as you says, he paid all but let pass, I came to be merry, wherewith merrily, preface, have among you, blind harpers, said I, the mo the merrier, all we all day hear and see. Yea, but the fewer the fair, uh, the better fair, said he. Then here were, ere I came, quoth I, too many. Here is but little meat left, if there be any. And it is ill coming, I have heard say, to, end the, uh, to the end of a shot and the beginning of a fray. Put by thy purse, quoth he, thou shalt not pay, and fray here should be none, were thou gone thy way. Here is, since thou camest too many uh, feet a bread, Welcome when thou goest, thus is thine errand sped. Come, I come, quoth I, to be one here if I shall, it is merry in hall when the beards wag all. What, bid me welcome, pig, I pray thee kiss me. Nay, farewell, sow, quoth he, our lord bless me from bassing of beasts of bear-binder lane. 
Have I, quoth I, for fine sugar, fair rat's bane? Many years since my mother said to me, her elders would say, it is better to be an old man's darling than a young man's warling, and God knoweth I knew none of this snarling in my old husband's days, for as tenderly he loved me as ye love me slenderly. Uh, we bo drew both in one line. Quoth he, would to our lord ye had in that drawing hanged both in one cord, for I never meet thee at flesh nor at fish, but I have sure a dead man's head in my dish. Whose best and worst day, that wished may be, was when thou didst bury him and marry me. If you, quoth I, long for a change in these cases, would to God he and you had changed places, but best I change place, for here I may be spared, and for my kind coming, this is my reward. Claw a churl by the arse, and he shitteth in my hand. Knack me that nut. Much good do it, or you all this band. Sh must she not, quoth he, be welcome to us all, among us all letting such a farewell fall? Such carpenters, such chips, quoth she, folk tell, such lips, such lettuce, such welcome, such farewell. Thine own words, quoth he, thine own welcome marred. Well, said she, whensoever we twain have jarred, my words be pride at narrowly I espy. Ye can see a mote in another man's eye, but ye cannot see a bulk in your own. Ye mark my words, but not that they be grown by your revelous riding in every royal, while nigh every day a new mare or a moil, as much unhonest as unprofitable, which shall bring us shortly to be unable to give a dog a loaf, as I have oft said. Albeit your pleasure may no time be denied, Still you must have both the finest meat apparel and all things that money may get, like one of fond fancy so fine and so neat, that would have better bread than is made of wheat. The best is best cheap, quoth he. Men say clear. Well, quoth she, a man may buy gold too dear. Ye neither care, nor well cast, nigh cast what ye pay, to buy the beer it dearest for the best all way. Then for your diet, who useth a feeding such? Eat more than enough, and drink much more too much. But temperance, temperance teacheth this, where we keepeth at school. He that knoweth when he hath enough is no fool. Feed by measure, and defy the physician. And in the contrary, mark this condition. A swine over fat is cause of his own bane. Who seeth not therein, his wit is in the wane. But pompous provision cometh not all way of gluttony, but pride sometimes, some say. But this proverb t preacheth to men, hot or high, hew not too high, lest the chips fall in mine eye. Measure is a merry mean, as this doth show, not too high for the pie, nor too low for the crow. The difference between starling and stark blind, uh, the difference between staring and stark blind, the wise man at all times to follow can find. And he wis, an auditor of a mean wit, may soon account, though hereafter come not yet. Yet is he sure be the day never so long, evermore at last they ring to even song. And where ye spend much, though ye spent but little, yet little and little the cat eateth the flittle. Each loss by length may grow importable, a mouse in time may bite a to a cable. Thus, to end things of to end of all things, be we leaf or loaf, yet lo, the pot so long to the water goeth, till at last it cometh home broken. Few words to the wise to be spoken, if ye were wise, here were enough, quoth she. Here is enough, and too much, dame, quoth he. Never a true word spoken. Um, um, once again, I am drawn to the scatological. Uh, <laughs> the stuff that's really landing for me in this, um, in a section that's got very confused, I, uh, she presumably has now entered and this is now a three-way argument. Um, but I, 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 I must say I didn't take in when that happened or how that happened. Um, uh, but they, they seem to have three interlocutors. But yes, um, claw a churl by the arse and he shitteth in my hand. Um... I mean, it's it it's so true. It's so true. Who hasn't been there? Who hasn't hasn't been there? I, I, and it does sort of sum up the, the this this middle person's uh, trap here is that he's he's basically caught 
just I, I don't want to get involved i don't want to get involved i don't want to get involved um and they're sort of thl throwing this stuff but i have to say i'm i'm not sure what this is adding to the narrative that we haven't already had earlier i i feel we're just we're just in the middle of more stuff um but disagree if you wish any thoughts on this any any proverbs that are leaping out at you there were several quite weird ones that i didn't quite get um it was nice to hear god god have mercy horse um a turn of phrase which um comes back to us with talton later on as uh, as a famous catchphrase of talton the clown uh, uh in his interactions with the horse morocco uh, god a mercy horse uh is his turn of phrase and there is a debate roiling uh within the group as to whether that is god have mercy horse or it's god a mercy horse um now i'm leaning on god god uh, and the 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 uh is a contraction of have um but um uh, people d agree or disagree um anyway this is an entirely side issue this uh, this this my th this question but the idea that this is a this is a, effectively a, a, a some sort of p proverb i don't know what god a mercy a pig of my own sow um I, it is italicized here so it does seem to be a, a thing but i don't know what the thing is at this point so it's, i'm curious i don't know eric save me i'm just saying words now the the one that caught me off guard and that i really don't understand is such lips such lettuce it's like mm. what <laughs> we've I had mean... odd uses of the word lettuce before somewhere else so I, I i i think i should have made better notes as to the uses of lettuce yeah yeah it's kind of I don't know, just such lips, such letters, such welcomes, such farewell. It's like, what What does that even mean? It's like, th this is the, the deal you kind of made? Is that what it means? Is that like... Such carpenters, such chips, such lips, such letters, such welcome, such farewell. Um, hmm. She will lie as fast as a dog will lick, lick a dish. I like that. I like that. You, you can change the gender, so it's uh, uh, you know to for for the appropriate setting uh, situation. Um, yeah, uh, Tom. All of it is like going skiing. You just head downhill and keep going, and you get some some nice patches, and then you get some strange patches, and then and then you hit a tree. Is, yeah, it does, I've done it, that, <laughs> but it does. It, it does. Yeah. It does go downhill in a, mm. in a good way. Yeah. yeah, I I I say I'm I'm starting to feel that there is a there is a a thing that can be crafted out of this that is performy, but it's it's going to take a lot of crafting. I think you know we're going to have to, but we need to keep that momentum. I think we need to 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 keep that energy. Otherwise, uh, it will just become very tedious very fast. Yeah. Um, which indeed the viewer at home may already be thinking. <laughs> we won't judge you. It's fine. Uh, okay, let's carry on. Uh, Eric, here is enough and too much, Dame, quoth he. Uh, take, us, take it on from there. For though this appear a proper, bleh, a proper pulpit piece, where, yet when the fox preacheth, then beware your geese. A good tale ill told in the telling is marred. So are, quoth she, good tales well told and ill heard. Thy tales, quoth he, shew long hair and short wit, wife, but long be thy legs and short be thy life. Pray for yourself, I am not sick, quoth she. Well, let's see what thy last tale cometh to, quoth he. But thou, as thou sayest, I spend all oh, this thy words wonder, but as deep drinketh the goose as the gander. Thou canst cough in the ombre if need be, when I shall cough without bread or broth for thee, whereby thou sendest me abroad to spend, thou gospest at home to meet me at land's end. Oh, then I beguile you, quoth she, this ye means, but sir, my pot is whole and my water clean, while well, thou wouldst have me, quoth he, pinch like a snudge, every day to be thy drivel and drudge. Not so, quoth she, but I would have ye stir, honestly, to keep the wolf from the dirt. I would drive the wolf out the door first, quoth he, and that I, can I not do till I drive out thee. 
a man were better drowned in Venice Gulf than have bearded bear have such a bearded bear or such a wolf. But I, had I not been witched, my wedding to flee the terms that long to wedding had warned me. First wooing for wooing, banner for banning, the banes for my bane, the bands for my bane. Okay. Um, and then this thus scanning, marrying, marring, and then what and then and what married I then? A woman, as who say, woe to the man. Thus wed I with woe, wed I Joe, wed I Jane. I pray God the devil go with thee down the lane. I grant, quoth she, this doth sound as ye agreed, on your side in words, but on my side indeed. Thou grantest this grant, quoth he, without any grace, ungraciously to thy side to turn this case. Uh, leave this, quoth she, and leave liberality to stint strife grown by your prodigality. Oft said the wise man whom I erst did, erst did bury, better are meals many than one too merry. Oh, quoth he, that answered is with, that is answered with this wife. Better is one month's cheer than a churl's whole life. I think it learning of a wiser lector to learn to make myself mine own executor and to speak. Then spare for another that might wed thee, as the fool thy first husband spared for me. And as for ill places, thou seekest me in more, and in worse too than I into any go. Whereby this proverb shows thee in by the weak, no man will another in the oven seek, except that himself hath been there before. God give grace them that has been good, I say no more. And... Thou and would have thee say less, except thou couldst prove such process as thou slanderously dost move. For a slander, perchance, quoth she, I not deny it may be a slander, but it is not a lie. It is a lie, quoth he, and thou a liar. Will ye, quoth she, drive me to touchy nightmare? I rub the gold horse back till he winch and yit. I would make he would make it seem that I touch him no wit. But I wot what I wot, though I few words make. Many kiss the child for the nurse's sake. Ye have many good children to look upon, and ye bless them all, but ye base but one. This half showeth what the whole world, what the whole meaneth that I mean. Ye fetch circum, yeah, circumquax to make me believe, or think that the moon is made of a green cheese, and when ye have made me yell out in all these, it seemeth ye would make me go to bed at noon. And over to Tom. Nay, quoth he, the day of doom shall be done, ere thou go to bed at noon or night for me. Thou art to be plain and not to flatter thee, as wholesome as a morsel for my comely course, as a shoulder of mutton for a sick horse. The devil with his dam hath more rest in hell than I have here with thee. But well, wife, well, 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 quoth she, many wells, many buckets, yea, quoth he, and many words, many buffets. Have you some husband that snapped at him thus? I was, he could give you a, you a rumbunctiousness. A dog will bark, uh, he bite, and so be that, and so thou, after thy barking, will bite me. I throw now, but it is hard to make an old dog stoop. Lo, quoth, lo, she, quoth she, a man may handle his dog so that he may make him bite him, though he would not. Husbands are in heaven, quoth he whose wives scold not. Thou makest me a claw where it itches not. I would thy tongue were cool to make thy, thy tails more cold. That aspen leaf such spiteful clapping hath bred, that my cap is better to ease than my head. God send that head, she said, a better nurse, for when the head acheth, all the body is the worst. God grant, quoth I, the head and the body both too, to nurse each other better than they do, or ever have done for the most times past. I bought to nurse both, quoth she, 
had it not been waste. Marjorie, good cow, quoth he, gave a good meal, but when then she cast it down again with her heel. How can a purse for profit be delightful, whose person and properties be thus spiteful? A piece of a kid is worth two of a cat, who the devil will change a rabbit for a rat? If I might change, I would rather choose to beg or sit with a roasted apple or an egg, where mine appetite serveth me to be, than every day to fare like a duke with thee. Like a duke? Like a duck! Ah. quoth she. Thou shalt fare, except thou shalt spare more than thou dost yet spare. Thou farest too well, quoth he, but thou art so wood, thou knowest not who doth thee harm, who doth thee good. Yes, yes, quoth she, for all those wise words uttered, I know on which side my bread is buttered, but there will no butter cleave on my bread, and on my bread any butter to be spread. Every promise that thou therein dost utter is as sure as it were sealed with butter, or a mouse tied with a thread. Every good thing thou lettest even slip, like a wag halter slipstring. But take up in time, or else I protest, or be not a bed that shall have ill rest. Now go to thy darlings, and declare thy grief, where all thy pleasure is. Hop, whore, pipe, thief. Chapter 8. Uh, Eric, take it away. With this, thence hopped she, wherewith, O Lord, he cried, what wretch but I this wretchedness could bide? How be it in all this woe I have no wrong, for it only is all on myself along, where I should have bridled her first with the rough bit to have made her chew on the bridle one fit? For licorice, last bleh, for licorice luck, lucre of a little winning, I gave her the bridle at beginning, and now she taketh the bridle in the teeth, and runneth away with it, whereby each man seeth it is, as old men might well understand, ill putting a naked sword in a madman's hand. She taketh such heart of grace, though I maim her or kill her, yet I shall, shall I never reclaim her. She hath, they say, been stiff-necked evermore, and it is ill healing of an old sore. This proverb prophesied many years agone, it will not out of the flesh that is bred in the bone. What chance have I to have a wife of such sort that will no fault amend in earnest nor sport? Small thing amiss lately did I, I did espy, which to make her mend by a jest merrily, I said but this, taunt tivet, wife, your nose drops, so it may fall, I will eat no brow sops this day. But two days after, this came in your. I had sorrow to my sops enough, be sure. Well, quoth I, it is ill jesting on the sooth. Sooth board is no board in aught that mirth doeth. Such jests could not juggle her were or to miss, nor turn melancholy to mirth, for it is no playing with the straw before an old cat. Every trifling toy age cannot laugh at. Ye may walk this way, but sure ye shall find the further ye go, the further behind. Ye should consider the woman is old, and what for a hot word, soon hot, soon cold. Bear with them that bear with you, for she is scanned, not only the fairest flower in your garland, but also she is all the fair flowers thereof. Will ye requite her then with a taunting scoff, or with any other kind of unkindness? Take heed is a fair thing, beware this blindness. Why will ye, quoth he, I shall follow her will to make me John Drollat, or such a sneak bill to bring her solace that bringeth me sorrow? By our lady, then shall we catch birds tomorrow. A good wife maketh a good husband, they say. That, quoth I, you may turn another way to make a good husband, make a good wife. I, I can no more herein, but God's thing will strive. Amen, quoth he, and God have mercy, brother. I will now amend this house and pair another. And that and he... And over to Tom. And that he meant of likelihood by his own. For so appeared he that ere three years were grown, that little and little he decayed so long, till he at length came to buckle and bear a thong. The discharge charge that necessarily grew, there was no more water than the ship drew. 
Such drifts drave he for ill to worse and worse, till he was as bare as a bear's bird's ass. Money and money worth did so amiss him, that he had not now one penny to bless him. Which foreseen in this woman, wisely weighing, that meat was to stay somewhat for her staying, to keep yet one mess of Alison's in store, she kept one bag, and that had not seen before, a poor cook that many not lick his own fingers. But bout her at home now still she lingers, nor check her abroad all that was not clear in the co coast. He looked like one that had been beshit the roast, but whether any secret tales were sprinkling, or that he by guess had not an inkling of her hoard or that, he thought be to amend and turn his ill beginnings to a good end in showing himself a new man as was fit that appeared shortly after, but not yet. So turn over a new leaf, uh, at least in appearance. Again, drawn to the scatological here. Um, uh, again, very similar themes. Um, uh, but uh, yes, he looked like one that had beshit the roast. Um, yeah. Um, I know on which side my bread is buttered. Um, I do. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, it's... Um, they've, they've had a screaming row and it's gone on. And uh, But they, they've sort of... Yeah, he's going to pretend to turn over a new leaf. Is that what's going on? Did I did I get is that why I, 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 am I just making this up? I, it's very difficult to tell. Um, we have drifted now back to the narrator who's telling us what's going on. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, she's turned off the taps of the money. So uh, he's uh, he's he's turning over a new leaf. Um, um, yeah. Any thoughts or favourite favourite things? Like a duke, like a duck. I don't know what that means. I like it. I don't know what it means. Um, like a duke. I mean, I, is it a proverb or is it just a good line? It's, it's just a good comeback, really, isn't it? I, I don't see how there's anything proverbial about that, but maybe I'm missing something. I don't know. Um, there was an awful lot of uh, spreading butter references that was quite interesting i managed to really riff on that i quite liked that i like it when they they find a theme and they riff on it for a while um yeah any other thoughts otherwise we'll move on nope okay don't worry we're nearly there it's nearly over the end is in sight uh, we will continue uh, as we go on with chapter 9 and it's me up uh, our narrator is continuing one day in their arbour which stood so it in to mine that I might and did closely mine ear incline and likewise cast mine ear to hear and see what they said and did where they could not see me he unto her a goodly tale began more like a wooer than a wedded man as far as matter thereof therein served but the first part from words of wooing swerved and stood upon repentance with submission of his former crooked unkind condition praying her to forgive and forget all free as he forgave her as he forgiven would be loving her now as he full deeply swore as hotly as ever he loved her before well well quoth she whatever ye now say it is too late to call again yesterday wife quoth he such may my diligence seem that the offence of yesterday i may redeem god taketh me as i am and not as i was take you me so too and let all things past pass i pray thee good wife think i speak and think plain what he runneth far that never turneth again uh, ye be young enough to mend i agree it but i am quoth she uh, too old to see it and amend ye not i am too old a year what is life where living is extinct clear namely at old years of least help and most need but no tale could tune you in time to take heed 
if I tune myself now, quoth he, it is fair, and hope of mine of true tune shall tune me from despair. Believe well and have well, men say. Yea, said she, do well and have well, men say also, we see. But what man can believe, that man can do well. Uh, who of no man will counsel take or hear tell? Which of y which to you, when any man any way tried, then were ye deaf, ye could not hear on that side? Whoever with you any time wherein wears, he must both tell you a tale and find you ears. You had on your harvest ears thick of hearing, but this is a question of old inquiring. Who is so deaf or so blind as is he that wilfully will neither hear nor see? When I saw your manner, my heart for woe molt. Then would ye mend as a fletcher mends his bolt, or as a sour ale mendeth in summer, I know and knew which way the wind blew and will blow though not in my profit i profit what a prophet was i i prophesied this too true a prophesy when i was right ill believed and worst hard by flinging from your folks at home which all marred when i said in semblance either cold or warm a man far from his good is nigh his harm or willed ye to look that ye lost no more on such as show that hungry flies bite sore then would ye look over me with stomach swollen uh, like as the devil looked over lincoln the devil is dead wife quoth he for ye see i look like a lamb in all your words to me look as ye list now quoth she thus looked ye then for those looks i show this to show each man such proof of this proverb as none is greater which saith that some man may steal a horse better than some other may stand and look upon lewd housewives might have words but i not one that might be allowed no, but now if ye look in mistaking me ye may see ye took the wrong way to wood and the wrong sow by the ear and thereby in the wrong box to thrive ye were i have heard some to tell tale this tale not selled when thrift is in the town ye be not ye be in the field but contrary you make that sense in sound when thrift was in field ye were in the town field where might sink or swim while ye had any town where was your well to turn the penny but town or field where most thrift did appear what ye won in the hundred ye lost in the shire in all your good husbandry thus rid the rock ye stumbled at a straw and leaped over a block so many kinds of increase you had in choice and naught increase to or keep how much how can i rejoice good riding at two anchors men have told for if the one fail the other may hold yet you leave all anchor hold on seas and lands and so set up shop upon goodwin sands but as folk have a saying both old and true in that they say black will take none other hue so may i say here to my deep dolor it is a bad cloth that will take no colour this case is yours for ye were so wise to take speck of colour of good advice the advice of all friends i say one another went in at the one ear and out at the other and as those words went out this proverb in came he that will not be ruled by his own dame shall be ruled by his stepdame and so you having lost your own good and your own friends now may seek your foreign friends if you have any i'm sure one of my great griefs among many is that ye have been so very a hog to my friends what man love me love my dog but you to cast precious stones before the hogs cast my good before a sort of cur dogs and salt bitches by whom now devoured and your honesty among them deflowered and that you may no more expense afford now can they not afford you one good word and you them as few and old folk understood when thieves fall out true men come to their good which is not always true but in all that rich i can no farthing 
my good the more fetch, nor I trow themselves neither, for they were sworn, light come, light go, and sure since we were born, ruin of one ravine was there none greater, for by your gifts they be as little the better, as you much the worse, and I cast away an ill wind that bloweth, no man to good, men say. Eric, take it away from me, please. Well, quoth he, every wind bloweth not down the corn. I hope, I say, good hap be not all outworn. I will now begin thrift, when thrift seemeth gone. What, wife, there be more ways to the wood than one, and I will essay all the ways to the wood till I find one way to get again this good. He will get it again, quoth she, I fear as shortly as a horse will lick his ear. The Dutchman saith that segging is a good cope. He is good cope. Good words bring not ever of good deeds good hope. And these words show your words spoken in scorn. It pricketh betimes that will be a good thorn. Timely crooketh the tree that will a good kamuk be. And such beginning, such end, we, day, we all day see. And you by me at beginning being thriven. And then to keep thrift could not be pricked nor driven. How can you now get thrift, the stock being gone, which is the only thing to raise thrift upon? Men say he may truly ill run that cannot go, and your gain without your stock runneth even so. For what is a workman without his tools? Tales of Robin Hood are good among fools. He can ill pipe that lacketh his upper lip. Whose lack of the stock his gain is not worth a chip. A tale of a tub your tale no tr truth avoweth. Yet Ye speak now as ye would creep into my mouth. In pure painted process as false as fair, how will ye amend when ye cannot repair? But against gay glossers this rude text recites, it is not all butter that the cow shites. I heard once a wise man say to his daughter, better is the last smile than the first laughter. We shall, I trust, quoth he. Laugh again at last, although I be once out of the saddle cast. Yet since I am bent to sit, this will I do. Recover the horse, or lease the saddle too. Ye never could yet, quoth she, recover any hap, to win or save aught to stop any one gap. For stopping of gaps, quoth he, care not a rush, I will learn to stop two gaps with one bush. Ye will, quoth she, as soon stop gaps with rushes as with any husbandly handsome bushes. Your tails have taste, have like taste, where temperance is taster, to break my head than give me a plaster. Now thrift is gone, now would ye thrive in all haste, and when ye had thrift, ye had like taste to waste. Ye like then better an inch of your will than all of your thrift. Wife, quoth he, be still, I may may I be hope forth an, an inch at a pinch. I will yet thrive, I say, as good as an inch as an L. Ye can, quoth she, make it so well, for when I gave you an inch, you took an L, till both L and inch be gone, and we in debt. Nay, quoth he, with a wet finger you can fret as much as any may easily all this matter ease, and this debate also pleasantly appease. I could do as much with an hundred pounds now as with a thousand afore, I assure you. Yea, quoth she, who had that he hath not, would do that he doeth not, as old man hath told. Had I as ye have, I would do more, quoth he, than the priest spake of on Sunday, ye should see. Ye do as I have, quoth she, for not I have, and not ye do. <laughs> What man, I trow ye rave, would ye both eat your cake and have your cake? You would have had of me all that I would make, and big man never so greedy to win. He can have no more of the fox but the skin. Well, quoth he, if ye list to bring it out, ye can give me your blessing in a clout. That were for my child, quoth he, had I any, verba legis digitis verba notata mero. But, husband, I have neither child nor money. He cast and conjectured this much like in show as the blind man casts his staff or shoots at the crow. Howbeit had I money, much, right much, and ye none, yet to be plain ye should have none for Joan. Nay, he that first flattereth me as ye have done, and doth as ye did to me after so soon, he may be my paternoster indeed, but be sure he shall never come into my creed. Ave Maria, quoth he. 
how much notion motion here is the prayers with how little devotion. But some men say, no penny, no potter, noster. I say to such, said she, no longer foster, no longer lemon or lemon. Um, but fair and well then, pray and shift each one for himself as he can, every man for himself and God for us all. To those words he said naught, but forthwith did fall from harping on that string to her flattering speech. And as I erst said, he did her so beseech that things are so far off, we're so now far on, that she may as well away she is gone, where all that was left lay with a trusty friend, dwelling a good walk from her at the town's end, and back again straight, a halting pace she hobbles, bringing a bag of royals and nobles, all that she had without restraint of one jot. She brought Bullock's noble for noble who had wrote, had she not even had she not one more, which after I well knew, and uh, non smiling toward him as she drew. She says, Tom, take over. Ah, uh, sir, light burden far heavy, quoth she. This light burden is long walked, well nigh trieth me. God give grace, I pray, not the fool this day. For here I send the axe after the helve away. But if ye will stint and avoid all strife, love and cherish this as thee would my life. I will, quoth him, wife, my God almighty, this gear cometh even in pudding time rightly. She snatched at the bag, no haste but good, quoth she, short shooting lessons, your game ye may see. Ye miss the cushion for all your haste to it, and I may set you beside the cushion yet, and make you wipe your nose upon your sleeve. For aught you shall win, you will, without you ask me leave. Have ye not heard tell, all covet, all loose? Ah, sir, I see ye may see no green cheese, but your teeth must water a good cockney coke, though he loved not to buy the pig in the poke. Yet snatch ye not at the poke that the pig is in, not for the poke, but for the pig good chat to win, like one lost half, one half lost till greedy grasping at it, ye would be over the stile ere to come at it. But abide, friend, your mother bid tell ye where were ye born, snatching winneth it not if ye snatch till morn. Men say, said he, long standing and small offering maketh poor persons, and in such signs and proffering, many petty tales and merry toys as they, before this bag came from her way, from her away, kindly he kissed her with words not tart nor tough, but the cat knoweth whose lips she licketh well enough. Anon the bag she delivered him and said, He who should bear it for that it now heavy weighed with good will, wife, for it is, said he to her, a proud horse that will not bear his provender, and oft before seemed she never so wise, yet was she now suddenly waxen as nice, as it had been a hap hapeth of silver spoons thus cloudy mornings turned to clear afternoons but so high noon it was that by and by they rose and went to dinner loving lie and chapter 10 this dinner thought he long and straight after that to his accustomed customers he gat with whom in what time he spent one groat before in less time he spent now ten groats or more and in small time he brought the world so about that he brought the bottom of the bag clean out his gadding thus again made her ill content but she not so much as dreamed that all was spent howbeit suddenly she minded on a day to pick the chest-lock wherein this bag lay, determining thus, this, 
If it lay whole still, so shall it lie, no might she minish will. And if the bag began to shrink, she thought best to take for her part some part of the rest. But straight, as she had forthwith, opened the lock and looked in the bag, what it was a clock. Then was it proved true, as this proverb goeth, he that cometh last to the pot is soonest wroth. By her coming last, and too late the pot, whereby she was potted, thus like a sot, to see the pot both skimmed for running over, and also all the liquor run at rover, at her good husband's and her next meeting, the devil's good grace might have given a greeting, either for honour or honesty as good as she gave him. She was, as they say, horn wood, in no place could she set herself to settle, it seemed to him she had pissed on a nettle. She nettled him, and he rattled her so, that at end of that fray asunder they go, and never after came together again. He turned her out at doors to graze on the plain, and himself went after, for within fortnight all that was left was launched out quite, and thus had he brought haddock to paddock, till they were both were not worth a haddock. It hath been said, uh, need maketh the old wife trot. Other folk said it, but she did it, God wot. First from friend to friend, and then from door to door, a begging of some that had begged of her. Uh, but as why men say, misery may be mother, where one beggar is driven to beg of another. And thus wore and wasted this most woeful wretch, till death from his life did her wretchedly fetch. Her late husband, and now widower, here and there, wandering about, few know, and fewer care where, cast out as an abject he lead of his life, till famine belike set him after his wife. Now let us note here, first of the first twain, where they both wedded together to remain, hoping joyful presence should wear out all woe, yet poverty brought that joy to joy fail low. But notably note these last twain, whereas he took her only for that he rich would be, and she him only in hope of good hap, in her doting days to be danced on the lap, in condition they differed so many ways, that lightly he laid her up for holy days. Her good he laid up, so lest fee thieves might spy it, that neither she could, nor he can, come by it, thus failed all four, of all things less and more which they all, or any of all, married for. Eric, now for the thrilling conclusion of chapter 11, where we're going to find out which of the two courses of action are the best. Uh, who who wants to place your bet? Place your bets now. Uh, rich wife uh, or, and old, or young wife and poor? What's he going to go for? Should, should I continue or should uh, if anyone do, wants do you want to make my opinion? Any, anybody feels <laughs> they've got, a, anyone's the got anyone got an opinion? They're two terrible, terrible choices. Frankly, he's he's given them. Uh, you can you can you can marry and be poor, and from from the offset, or you can marry and it will go horribly wrong, and then you'll be poor. So you, basically, the outcome is this: you'll be poor. So I think he's screwed either way. I suppose it depends on whether he's an asshole or not, really. Um, Tom. It's a poor cook that doesn't lick his own fingers, though. It is. It is. Uh, the cat knoweth whose lips she licked well enough. Um, That's all I have to say. Indeed. Um, love me. Love my dog. Uh, <laughs> That's such a random one. <laughs> it's just, what? Uh, anyway, um, Eric, d d take us to the end, please. Chapter 11. Forsooth, said my friend, this matter maketh boast of diminution, di diminution. For here is a milk post thwitten to a pudding prick so nearly that I confess me discouraged nearly, clearly, in both my weddings, all in all things except one. That spark of, have, of hope of I to proceed upon. Though these and some other speed ill as ye tell, that some other have lived and loved full well. If I should deny that, quoth I, I should rave, for both of both these sorts I grant that myself have seen of to one sort and heard of t'other, that liked and lived right well, each with each other. 
But whether fortune will, will you that man declare that shall choose in this choice your comfort or care, since before you have chosen, we cannot know, I thought to lay the worst as ye the best show, that ye might, being yet at liberty, with all your joy, join your all your jeopardy. And now in this herd, in these cases on each part, I say no more, but lay your hand on your heart. I heartily thank you, quoth he, I am sped of mine errand. This hitteth the nail on the head. Who that leaveth surety and leaveth under chance, when fools pipe by authority, he may dance. And sure am I, those twain who find and choose, though, though I not win, yet shall I not lose. And to win a woman here and lose a man, in all this great winning, what gain will I then? But mark how folly hath me away carried, how like a weathercock I have here varied. First these two women to lose I was loath that if I might, I would have wedded them both. Then thought I since have wedded one of them, and now know I, now I know, now know I clear, I will wed none of them. They both shall have this one answer by letter, as to ne good never a whit, as never the better. Now let me ask and yourself answer a sh the short question I asked while ere. A foul old rich widow, whether wed would ye, or a young fair maid, being poor as ye be. In neither barrel, better herring, quoth he. I like thus riches as ill as poverty. Who hath, who that hath either of these pigs in your he hath a pig worse pannier, sure. I was wedded unto my will, howbeit I will be divorced and wed to my wit. Whereby with these examples past, I may see fond wedding for love is good only to flee. Only for love or only for good or only for both, I would not by my, by my hood. Thus, no one thing only, though one thing chiefly shall woo me to wed now, for now I espy. Although the chief one thing in wedding be love, yet must more things join as all in one may move. Such kind of living for such kind of life is lacking the same no lack to like a wife. Here is enough. I am satisfied, said he. Since enough is enough, said I. Here may we with that one word take end good, as ye, as may be guessed, for folk say enough is as good as a feast. We cannot hear you. Good, sir. You are muted. <laughs> Rob, you're muted. He's, he's overcome. He's just overcome. <laughs> Either overcome with grief or joy, we cannot tell. Speechless. Ah, yes. Uh, I was I was saying so many witty things there, and uh, uh, we always say witty things. Um, so he uh, he decides not to marry anyone. Yay! That's that's good. I, you, don't know. I, I mean, did paint you. a really appalling portrait of what's likely to happen if you marry uh, in either case. So maybe maybe that was you know. Um, but it's yeah, it's like he's decided not to decide, um, and he's just gonna, you know. Can I just say, he's one selfish bastard. <laughs> After getting us to say all of that, <laughs> yeah, this is the thing. Um, Hayward does this. He does these long shaggy dog stories, and then he doesn't come up with a conclusion at the end. Um, this reminds me of uh, a play of love, which is where. There are there are four contestants basically, uh, who are arguing what is better or what is worse. Uh, is it to be uh, worse to be loved but n uh, to love someone but not be loved back, um, or you know, etc. There, there's all these combinations, or to love nobody and not be loved back, and and or to be or to be or to, or to be obsessively loved by someone you don't like, and or to be loved and loved in return. And it kind of he kind of fudges that at the end as well it doesn't kind of give you a proper conclusion um uh and he ends on enough is as good as a feast which is a title of a later play um there's a there, there are, there's a little bit of spate of plays by one playwright uh who tends to do um proverb plays or he builds plays around uh, or titles them around a proverb they don't always engage in the proverbs very much um but they they definitely sort of go with this uh, this thing so enough is as as good as a feast by william wager or wagger i'm, I'm gonna with wager who writes i say a few plays uh with with proverbs um as their as their t general title um 
And of course, uh, there's another play as well, Like Will to Like, which uh, has been quoted also in this text. Uh, we've had a few plays uh, quoted in uh, the play titles based on proverbs uh, have turned up uh, quite a few times. Um, uh, they were not worth a haddock. Um, indeed. Um, by the pig and the poke. Um, hitteth the nail on the head. Nail on the head there. Um, we were having a discussion about that this afternoon. I, I, I forget why. Um, in terms of the age of that. I th I th uh, there, was a, there was a discussion about that. About um, something along those lines anyway. Um, and yeah, she couldn't settle. Uh, it seemed to him she had pissed on a nettle. Uh, again, I, I tend to drift towards the scatological because they go quite well. Um, so yeah, that was that was that was that that came to a thrilling conclusion. Um, it's a shaggy dog story. That's what it is. It is literally a shaggy dog story. Um, it uh, yeah. Pig of the worst pannier. Uh, that turns up in another Hayward play, I'm fairly certain. Um, not actually sure what it actually means off the top of my head. Um, yeah. So, I, I do think that a very, very heavily cut version of this might be an interesting divertissement. Uh, yes. I think you could you could do something with a small cast of uh, you know four or so, um, who who or four or six um, who who do the basic cut down versions of these narratives uh, of the young the young couple and the 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 the, the older wife, um, and I think you could you could do that. Uh, it wouldn't be very long. I th I think it you know it's. Uh, this is a reasonably chunky text as it is. I think I'd be aiming at saying that's maximum forty-five minutes. Um, I don't think, you know, and it might be shorter than that. But I, I think there's, th we have to accept that there is some word play that has to be run through and played with, um, and, and enjoyed for that matter. Um, there was a lot about pigs earlier, wasn't there? There was a whole pig, poke, pig, 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 pig thing going on there. Um, so yeah, basically, any final thoughts now that we have uh, finished? I uh, say the the narrative version of the proverbs. There are there are more collections of proverbs and turns of phrase that he he produced, but they're very much a case of will this do? Uh, <laughs> uh, Tom, do you have anything to add that we haven't already said? Um, a cut down version, maybe half an hour, I think, would be. Very entertaining. Hmm. Yeah. Well, at least curious. I think it'll be curious. I think it'll be an interesting exercise. Um, I don't think it's going to threaten the West End anytime soon. I, I, I think that's uh, that's fair enough. Um, Eric, any anything to throw in? Um, I'm still waiting for the play title. Such lips, such letters. <laughs> I think that would be amazing. Um, though I have no idea what it means. Um, yeah, there, it's just such a long story just to get to this ending of this is a bad decision either way. Mm. Well, I mean, he hasn't opened the possibility that you could marry an older wife and be perfectly happy if you just don't be an asshole to her, which is a, a fairly straightforward point. Uh, I mean, if, if you intend to just be nice and not spend all the money so that you die in poverty, um, this this narrative is fine. So, you know, whereas the the younger, poorer wife, uh, you could argue that they hadn't properly done any pre-thinking of their financial planning before they got married. Uh, and that's that's more that's that's the stupider one actually there. Um, if the young man was more, more temperate and wasn't shagging around, he could have had a, and didn't spend all the money. He would have had a perfectly happy time. So the moral of that story is don't be an idiot slash arsehole. I, I think that's that's the moral of the story. Um, there. Hmm. Okay. Well, with that bombshell, I'm going to close the session. <laughs> all that remains is to thank all the wonderful readers for putting up with the pain and misery of this text because it has been hard work, and uh, we got through it. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, um, and goodbye. A piece of a kid is worth two of a cat.